What's up everyone? Welcome back to our weekly Toronto real estate market update. This is episode four. In this series, you'll learn about what's going on in the market from the latest news to the latest numbers, which are changing every single week. So let's get into it right after this. So this past week, we saw some trends develop specifically in the condo market with respect to sales volume and pricing, which might be showing signs of a rebound in the condo market sooner than we thought. Market health indicators for other single family home types in Toronto are still a bit unpredictable at this time. Ever since the sharp decline in home prices from the beginning of the year by about 70%, prices continue to fluctuate, which gives no real indication of where this side of the market is heading even one and a half months into spring. Let's take a closer look. When I look at this graph, it tells me two things. One is that homeowners are still up in the air when deciding if they should proceed with their plans to sell their homes. The second thing is that buyers are still in the market. People are still buying. This is apparent when you look at how home sales have leveled out ever since the middle of March. Around that time, the decline in home sales more or less came to a stop. But based on this information alone, it's still too early to tell what direction the market is headed into for single family homes in Toronto. But before we go any further, hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell if you're not already following us on YouTube. Doing this will allow other people to know what's going on in the real estate market and sharing this video will give them that extra piece of knowledge that we're here talking about every single week. Now let's get back to the content and talk about home prices. So just like sales numbers, the average price in Toronto is giving no discernible sense of direction for market stability for single family homes in Toronto. If you're a homeowner who has an urgent need to sell your home, then you might want to consider doing that sooner than later rather than waiting it out, especially if there is a sense of urgency and time is not on your side. The average home price in Toronto last week was 1.13 million, which is below the monthly average of 1.2 million. There will be more opportunity for home sellers once we see the weekly average consistently float around the same price as the monthly average. On the flip side, if you are a homeowner who is looking to sell your home but can wait it out just a little bit longer, then it could be more beneficial to you to wait it out if time is not an issue. In the long run, you can possibly benefit from a recovering Toronto real estate market. Now with respect to market recovery, Toronto condos might be seeing some positive changes now based on the most recent weeks of activity. Unlike single family homes, Toronto condo sales have already started to level out in the month of April. This type of consistency for a four week period could be a sign that sellers and buyers are regaining confidence in the condo market. It'll be exciting to see what the market looks like at the end of May and closer to the beginning of June once all the transactions pre-COVID-19 begin to close. Did you know that condo apartment sales in Toronto actually outpaces all other home types in the city? This makes sense when you consider two factors at play. The first one is that there's just simply more condos for sale in the city compared to other home types. The second reason is because condos are still considered to be the most affordable housing option in the city. And before we go into condo prices, give the video a thumbs up if you like this video and you're finding the information valuable. All right, now let's get back to the content. Condo prices have been rising over the past three weeks. We aren't seeing the same sales volumes earlier in the year, but at least 100 condos sold every single week are showing a rise in the average price, which is now at $640,000. This is higher than the monthly average price, which is $634,000. If we continue to see the weekly average price for condos rise above the monthly average on a consistent basis, we may see the Toronto condo market recover sooner than previously anticipated. In the case of both single family homes and condos, both are seeing canceled listings outpacing what's being listed on the market. Eventually, we'll see the trend for these two market indicators reverse with the listings exceeding the number of canceled, similar to what was happening before the middle of March. When we do see this, it'll be an indication that the market is already in recovery mode. But for now, what we can draw from these two graphs is that sellers are still losing confidence in the market and taking their homes down. It could also mean that buyers don't have the confidence to put their offers in, which I totally have empathy for because we are in financially difficult times right now. But if you are a buyer who is active in the market, now might be a great time to possibly get a great deal on your home. So now here's a summary of what we looked at. In the case of single family homes, we know that the sales volumes and the prices are fluctuating up and down and there's no real direction that we can discern from the market activity that we're seeing week over week. There also might be a rise in the condo market with a recovery coming much sooner than we previously anticipated. This is indicated in the rise in the weekly average price over and above the monthly average price showing that buyers are still active in the market. This makes sense given that condos are still considered to be the more affordable housing option in the city. Also, once we see new listings outpacing what's getting canceled, we'll know that we're either in or well on our way to a more balanced Toronto real estate market. 
So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and gained some new understanding of how the real estate market is trending in Toronto. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video because if you don't, then YouTube doesn't let you know when our new videos are out and you could really miss out on some cool educational real estate content. Also, if you're curious to learn more about the pre-construction condo process, be sure to check out the playlist up here. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.